Hello, welcome. Thank you so Hello. much for being here, everybody. Hello. Am I also live? I am. I think. You are live, Johnny. And I'm curious, as people are entering in the chat and are here to see you, I want to know where everybody is joining from. And so you'll see there's a little chat box there. Type in where in the world you're tuning in from. I'm in Canada. I'm at my grandparents' house in Sudbury. Where are you, Johnny? I am in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Oh, Owen's here. Hey, Owen. Owen, uh, Owen, the guy just commented there. He just took his miss, his new wife to Mauritania and Turkmenistan on honeymoon when, on two of my trips. That was his, his wow. Honeymoon. <laughs> yeah. A honeymoon with Johnny Ward. Bucket list. Yeah, what a legend. What a legend. One room for three of us. <laughs> okay, we got global audience. What do we got here? We got Singapore, Madeira, USA, India, Medellin, Colombia, London, England, Maine, Playa del Carmen. Porto, Toronto, Greece, Orlando. Okay, amazing. South Africa, Texas. Let us know where you're joining from. Global audience here to see Johnny. You're it's midnight for you, right, Johnny? Yeah, it's midnight. It's midnight, but it gives me a break from all my training and other work. So I'm happy to be here. <laughs> well, we're grateful that you're up late to chat with us. And also for those who are just joining, put in the chat where you're joining from and also fill out this poll. We really like these little would you rather games around here. So would you I rather? Love, I actually love them. I spend half, a, at least half an hour of every night out with the boys doing would you rather. So although they're not normally as clean as this one, but it's still quite interesting. Give us another one. Would you rather? <laughs> none that are, I got none that are safe for work and none knowing that it's getting recorded that we can discuss. You know, that's, that's probably the right call. This one's pretty safe for work unless your boss is watching. But would you rather $150,000 a year to do an office job you do like, it's an office job, or only $50,000 a year, but you get to work for yourself online oh, and remotely? What would you choose? So people are putting that in. Johnny, do you have an answer for that? I know it kind of is complicated yeah. multiple factors, but if you had to choose one. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough one. But the thing about making 50 US, that's like 35, 40 pounds sterling. Um, when it's for yourself, you can scale it. Whereas when it's working for someone else, you've got to climb that corporate ladder. It can take decades. Like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, there's your answer. I think you're not alone in that. People are filling that in. Let's see a few more people. We got people from Israel here. Ireland, Nigeria, Wales, St. Kitts, Finland, Sweden. This is a very global audience for you, Johnny. No pressure. And they're all here to see you. So I'm going to stop talking as quickly as possible and introduce our amazing webinar guest today. Um, but if you are new here, I'm Sam. I have the pleasure of moderating and hosting this webinar series we've been doing now for over a year. I've been able to meet amazing, talented, successful creators like Johnny. And when I'm not doing this, I have my own podcasting community called The Freedom Lifestyle, um, which is very much about being able to travel the world. And so, Johnny, is this true that you've traveled to every single country in the world? Half. Half. That I don't even know how that's possible, but I, I believe you. I would love to see your passport. Are you one of those people that have to add, like added pages to your passport yet? I, it took me 12 years, 12 years and 12 passports. So I just had to get a passport like every nine months. I was in the renewal phase. Oh, oh my goodness. That's wild. So if you're not familiar with Johnny, Johnny is an Irish blogger and travel content creator who started his blog One Step Forward in 2009 and has since turned it into a multi-million dollar company. Yes, he's visited every country in the world on a mission to visit the North and the South Pole, which you're heading to the South Pole next week. Did I get that right? In five days, yeah. <laughs> Holy, okay. So checking that off. And he lives by his motto, dream big, travel far, live full. Very beautiful. Thanks for being here, Johnny. Thanks for having me. Should we get cracking? 
we will get cracking in one second because we have an important announcement, which is that Johnny really wants to make this interactive today, friends. And so rather than just doing the Q&A at the very end of today's webinar, like we typically do, we're going to sprinkle in some questions throughout. So it's not just him talking for the full 40 minutes. And so if you have a question for Johnny, he's going to get into the weeds with some really technical stuff. He promised that we're all going to leave learning how to have a multi-million dollar blog ourselves. No oh, can pressure. Do <laughs> so use that Q&A box and we'll answer your questions throughout. If you are new here, this webinar series is hosted and powered by Safe Doing, which has a vision of building a global social safety net for remote workers and nomads like Johnny, like myself, like many of you who are joining here today. And Safe Doing has a mission of becoming your home country on the internet. And so they're most known for their product, Nomad Insurance. That's where the story started. Their fastest growing product to date, hundreds of thousands of customers worldwide. Um, but that's just one of many products that you can learn more about if you go to safedoing.com. It's actually how we got to meet Johnny, which hopefully we'll chat a little bit about today. But on that note, are you ready to take over, Johnny? Let's do it. Amazing. Okay. So passing the controls back to you. I'm going to stop that poll while you're getting set up. You need to share your screen again. Oh, I need to do that? Yeah. You need to share your screen. And okay, it wasn't as unanimous as I expected. It looks like <laughs> almost 90% of people would agree working for yourself, but still 12% of people would take that 150K office job. So hopefully you can speak to all of these types of people. Yeah, yeah. All right, so is my screen working there? Can it's shared correctly? Looks great. How to make real money blogging. Great. All right, so we got cracking then, this is it? You got this. Okay, thanks, Sam. Hey, everybody. Um, as Sam just said, uh, anyone who joined the last webinar, basically we've got like 40-ish minutes, actually maybe a bit less now. We've chatted nonsense for 10 minutes, but about 40-ish minutes. Um, and the last time I did it, I'm obviously in my office here in, in Chiang Mai, in, in my home that I recently built. And it's even though for you guys, you're listening to me talking, for me, I'm just speaking into an empty room. So it's quite strange. And I, last time I did it, it felt weird. So I think what we're going to do is I'm still going to do that and try to impart the information that I have. But maybe at the halfway point, I'll take some questions um, just in the chat box. So I'm going to scroll back and see if anyone's asked anything when I start talking about all the boring SEO stuff. Um, right. So hopefully you can see my screen, as Sam assures me. The first time I did this, I, I discussed a little bit about my story and, and about how, the real concept of, of the first webinar was very entry level, an introduction basically of how bloggers can make money and how they do make money and how I made my money. Um, the Safety Wing have published that on YouTube now, I think. So you can go and check that out. I tried to share it on my uh, socials this week, but the algorithm strangles it when you upload a YouTube link. So if you go to Safety Wing's YouTube channel, just search for Safety Wing on um, on YouTube, you'll, you can watch that. So I don't have to go through those details again. I'll give a quick recap. And then today, I'm, we're going to do another a webinar today, of course, and then another one when I get back from the South Pole um, at the end of January. So we'll get as far as we can in the time that we have today. Uh, but if you just look here on my first slide, there only are four or five slides. I remember what it was like at university, you're getting bored to death with 5,000 slides. So I'm not going to do that. Don't worry. Um, the structure today, we're going to talk an even briefer version of who I am for people who just joined me from Safety Wings channels who don't have a clue who I am and why I'm talking to you guys. Then I'm going to talk basically about SEO, about how um, you make your blog posts rank, how you get found on Google, how you make your money from that, how to actively do it logistically step-by-step. Step. It's very simple. Um, I'm going to talk about keyword research, how you choose when you write something, how you choose what to title it and why you do that, um, how to do your re the research and based on the volume and the difficulty and, and making sure that you're on page one for Google. And then point five, oh, the blog structure story as well. Again, these things are very simple. Like there's a lot of people trying to sell snake oil online, trying to sell courses to get you to sign up for $499 this and $399 that. This stuff's really simple. And in this 40 minute call, I'm going to give the basics, which will cover you 90%. So 
ignore the snake oil and just listen to the SEO without the bullshit. It's very simple. And then finally, well, if we have time today, we'll start talking about PBNs, private blog networks. Um, and that's probably where we'll start to run out of time. And I'll pick that up again at the end of January when I get back from Antarctica. The fifth point there, so the PBNs basically is once you work out how to make 500 bucks a month from one blog, PBNs are how to make that five grand and then 50 grand a month. That's the goal. Uh, right. How do I go to this next page here? There we go. All right. So who am I? I know a lot of you guys are, are here from my Insta and, and from the blog too, but some people are here from Safety Wings channels. So you might not know who I am. My name's Johnny. I'm from Ireland. You can probably hear from my accent. Um, I just turned 40 last week, two weeks ago. <gasps> How did that happen? Um, and I've been a blogger since 2009, so 14, 15 years since I was 25, 26. Um, I do do social media, but only for fun. Like I don't make any money. I don't try to monetize my social media, my YouTube, my Instagram. Uh, I don't care about that kind of stuff. I feel like I'm very much, maybe if you can feel my energy, I'm very much... I choose to prioritize my lifestyle and the business comes second. I've always done that. Um, and I feel like if you're, if you work in something that you're passionate about, the money's come, the money will come and the money has come for me. So if you can see the screen here, how did I basically make my name for myself in the blogging world or the adventure world? I visited every country in the world. There's 197 countries. I spent 11 years visiting all of them. Full-time travel, pretty much. It was brutal. <laughs> pretty cool. I started it right when I started my blog. So I was living off $5 a day for three, four years, sleeping in bus stations and riding on the top of trains. And then I started making money from my blog. And then the second half was a lot more comfortable. I'm now trying to become the first person to visit every country in the world, climb the highest mountain on every continent and reach both the North and South Pole. You can see that there. I climbed Everest three or four months ago, and that was the six of the seven summits. And now, as I mentioned, next week, I'm off to the South Pole to climb a mountain in Antarctica called Mount Vinson um, and then go to the South Pole. And then I'll become the first person in history, hopefully, inshallah, to do every country in the world, seven summits, North and South Pole. So that's my goal. As I say, I put my life before my business. All right. I also have a charity um, called Medita Adventures, where the money that we raise, what would normally be a profit margin, we use that money to build clinics and schools and kindergartens for developing countries, for rural communities in developing countries. We've got a project in Afghanistan in February where we're going to be taking 20 people or 18 people skiing in Afghanistan and do a big food donation in Feb. And um, then we're going to Kashmir, Pakistani Kashmir in June to fund a pop-up pop clinic and then travel through Kashmir on the Silk Route into China. So that's what I do with my time nowadays. And yeah, I made over $3 million blogging, a fair, a fair bit more than that now, actually, these days. So how did I do that? That's what we're going to talk about today through SEO and PBNs. Um, with the money then, if you see this section here, how blogs make money, these four points are basically what I spoke about in the last webinar. So I'm not going to go on about them today. CPM ad revenue is basically when people watch your blog, go to your blog, they see all those annoying ads and you get paid for that. Simple as that. Off page is stuff like this. Safety wing are paying me to be here so you guys don't have to pay so you can make money once you've built your brand. Affiliate marketing is when I sell someone else's product through my blog. I've got an audience now. So if I sell another product, I get a little bit of commission. And then sponsored content, which is what we're going to be talking about today through the SEO stuff and the PBM stuff and how I made millions doing that. Really, this is the, the golden ticket, the easiest way to make money um, and the most money you can make with no entry, no barrier to entry. So quite easy. Um, if you're interested in hearing about those in more depth, especially the top three, that's the first webinar. So check out Safety Wings uh, YouTube channel and you can see me rabbiting on about that. All right. So today we're going to talk about SEO. Um, we're going to talk about a, bit, a little glossary so people can understand the basics of SEO. And really, if you get the basics, even in this one webinar today, that's all you really need. It's simple. I'm awful at technology. I'm unprofessional. I don't have an alarm to wake up in the morning. 
my blog posts and social media is full of spelling mistakes and no filters and it's not all polished content. And I live in a mansion in Thailand because what I did is take action. I didn't sit around waiting for it to be perfect. So hopefully you can see from uh, this webinar that I'm giving now, you don't have to be some genius to make money from blogging. It's genuinely easy. I have nothing to sell you guys. I've got no course, no book, no products to sell you. I'm telling you, it's not difficult if you set your mind to it. And if I can do it, not from zero tech background, you guys can do it too. So the SEO that I'm going to talk about today is sounds entry level, but if you apply the entry level stuff, you can be a successful blogger. It's black and white. All right. Part of that is keyword research. And we'll talk about that in a second. And then if we have time, we'll talk about PBNs and how me and a lot of my friends here in Chiang Mai, Thailand made seven figures and beyond quite quickly. So for me then, with the sponsored content, which is the point that we're going to talk about now, this started, the sponsored content started, I may, I started blogging in 2009. In 2010, I got an email from an advertiser who wanted to buy a piece of sponsored content on my blog. It was 50 bucks and I, they paid me via PayPal and I published a piece of their content. Pretty simple. And then... I continued to do that through 2010, 2011. I was making two grand a month, three grand a month, four grand a month. 2012 then is when I started with my PBNs, which is when you own multiple websites. I only maintain one step forward. My main blog with my own voice and the content that I create all goes on that blog, but I've got loads of secondary shitty sites that I use just for adverts. And so my, my two grand, three grand, four grand a month from 2010, 2011, suddenly when I figured out how to do that in 2012, I was making 50K a month. Um, and give and take, that was 2012. So it's obviously 2023 20, now. I've been making between 30 and 50 grand a month every month for 11 years now, which is how I've obviously made a few million that I've made. And I could, I could afford to do that every country and all this stuff and the charity and the house that I'm in. So... That all came from sponsored content, or a lot of it did. And that's what we're going to talk about. So SEO then. What is SEO? For people who, for any bloggers who are joining, hopefully this is going to all be second nature to you guys. You should know all the terms that I'm about to talk about. For people who are, are complete newbies and, and wanting to learn about how to blog and, and how to make money blogging, SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. So if you're a newbie, I would recommend grabbing a pen or opening your laptop, uh, another tab in your laptop so you can make some notes because there's going to be a big glossary of me talking about some boring topics. I'll try to be quick and then you can rewatch it when Safety Wing published the YouTube video. All right. So search engine optimization. Basically, as a blogger, when I write a blog post about climbing Everest, for example, there's no point in me writing that and publishing that and it being lost on page six of Google search results because no one finds it, right? This is the basic premise of SEO. You need to make sure that when you create that content, whether it's a generic piece of content to make you money or a, a, an emotional piece of content like me climbing Everest that you want people to read, um, regardless of the motivation, you want it to be on page one of Google. If it's not on page one, you might not, you might as well not have written it aside from any cathartic process you might find. So you need to be on page one. And that essentially is what SEO is. It's not just about creating the content. You need to be smart when you create the content and using like certain structures will allow you to be on page one or allow you to work towards being on page one. So let's have a look at the actual basics of SEO. How does Google work out what to put first? Okay. So every time you search for cheap flights to Thailand or how to build a villa in Chiang Mai or two weeks itinerary in Portugal, as soon as you do that, the Google God, the Google engine, the Google algorithm instantly has to analyze a billion websites. It has to think about what you're searching for and all the content that it's got in the back end. And then it has to choose which to rank number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. And it does that in a split second, right? And you as a user, as a non-blogger, you just have to trust that Google's doing its best job to give you the most relevant content. But as a content creator, as a blogger, 
you're constantly fighting to be the first result, second result, third result. If you're there's 10, 10 results on, the, on page one, as soon as you're at the 11th result, you're nowhere. No one clicks on the second page. Statistically, I think it's 98% stay on the first page. So if you're not on the first page, you've wasted your time creating the content. And that content might have taken you one, two, three days to write. So for all the time that you spend creating content, which is beautiful, you all have to spend equal amount of time on SEO. It's not just about writing beautiful words. You have to think about how the hell can I force this to be on page one? And that's what SEO is. And every time you as a, as a Google user, just Google something on a whim, you assume that whatever comes to you comes to you, but it's a constant battlefield on the back, on the back end of everyone fighting for your eyeballs. And that's what being a blogger is. And that's what SEO is. So there's a few things that you have to know and not as many as people would think like SEO sounds complicated, but it's not so complicated. There's what, how many, 10 or 12 key words in a glossary here that if you guys can understand these words, you basically understand 80% of SEO. And if you understand 80% of SEO, you, you too can rank on page one. You don't need to be some geeky, nerdy guy fixating on where you place uh, some backend HTML code that I have no idea how to do. You just need to know this, and this is enough to be on page one. So the first and most important thing is something called domain rating and what formerly used to be called domain authority and sometimes still gets referred to as that or DR and DA, domain rating, domain authority. This is the number one most important thing in the entire Google engine, in the whole ecosystem of being a blogger and making money online as a blogger and, and me making the money that I've made is domain rating and domain authority. So what is it? Every website in the world is essentially in layman's terms ranked from zero to a hundred. You have a domain rating from zero to a hundred. So Facebook and YouTube and TikTok and google.com itself, they all have a rating of a hundred out of a hundred. And if you were to start a new blog, susangoestraveling.com and you just bought the domain today and you hosted it today and it's brand new and there's no content on it and you've just got a basic website theme and it's literally five minutes old, that has a domain rating of zero. And then every website from Susan's new website all the way up to Instagram is ranked from zero to 100. And that domain rating is the number one driver of whether you'll be on page one for the content that you create. So basically, if you have a domain rating of 80 out of 100 and you write about the, a Bangkok itinerary, the blog post is called Bangkok itinerary. If your domain rating is 80, there's a strong chance you'll be on page one when people search for the term Bangkok itinerary. If you're a new blogger and you have a domain rating of five or 10 and you create a blog post called Bangkok itinerary, there's no chance you'll be on page one. So to make that clearer, if you have a low domain rating uh, because your site's new or you don't understand SEO and you write the best Bangkok itinerary the world has ever seen, you spend a year writing it, you write 500,000 words, you write your dissertation on your PhD and you put it on your new blog with a low domain rating, it has no chance of being page one. And then... Me as an established blogger, I can churn out some shitty blog, 500 words. That's not very helpful to the user. But because my domain rating is high, I'll rank on page one and you won't. So it's not always about the content. In fact, it's more about the domain rating than the content. Google hates this. Google doesn't like people to talk about this because they want to pretend that they give you the best information, but it's not true. The site with the higher domain rating generally finishes first. However, there's lots of people with high domain ratings. So you also still want to produce good content because you're also fighting against other people with high domain ratings, right? So um, oh, I just see some questions here. Yeah, if your domain rating is 91, and that's true, or it in the chat, then yes, you're flying, mate. You should be making a mill a year without a worry if that 91 is true. So one step forward uh, is domain, has a domain rating of 57. It used to be 65 or so. Um, but I do some stuff that Google doesn't like to make money, uh, which I'll talk about with the PBN stuff, either later on this call or in January. So they punish me sometimes. 
So that's domain rating. It's very, very important. Right. Next. In our boring glossary, I'm going to try to do this quickly because I hate this kind of lecture style. Listen to me while I bore people to death, university lecture stuff. Okay. Indexing, crawling, and spiders. When I write a blog post, Google doesn't know that I've written a blog post, right? So because people are creating content every day, the Daily Mail, BBC, CNN, me, we're constantly creating content. Google has to do something called indexing. And that's when it essentially acknowledges that there's new content being created. You can manually index. If you're a smaller blogger, Google constantly sells crawlers and spiders, essentially like the matrix style when all those little uh, electric um, spiders go crawling through the data centers. Google does that infinitely across the whole website and they're constantly searching um, every website for new content. But if you're a new blogger, that doesn't happen. So you need to manually request every new piece of um, content that you create to be indexed. And you can do that through something called Google Search Console. So the, day, the second that you finish creating the new piece of content, you go to Google Search Content Console and you press index and it'll then automatically index it. When you're a bit more of an established blogger, like my blog, Google sends spiders and crawlers to my site all the time. So I don't have to do that. It normally gets done within an hour or two. But when you're a new blogger, you should do that manually. Okay, that's what indexing is. White hat and black hat SEO. This is where the money is. So SEO, as I told you, is, is the battle to rank on page one, right? White hat SEO is what Google tells you that works to become, uh, to, to rank on page one. And it's bullshit, basically. They want you to create amazing content, whether you're CNN or BBC or a blogger like me. And they say that organically, because you've created such a beautiful piece of content, people will share it, people will link to it, and then automatically the algorithm will know that this is quality and you'll end up on page one. Sure. If you're BBC, that is true. That happens. If you're like Johnny No Name living in Thailand trying to make some money blogging like me, that's just not true. But Google tells you you're only allowed to do white hat SEO. That's what it's called. However, black hat SEO is when you break Google's rules. Google's got ter Google has got terms and conditions, essentially like the Google law. And they tell you not to do some stuff because they don't want you to manipulate the search results, which is absolute nonsense. That's exactly what you want to do. You want to manipulate the search results to make sure that you're ranking on page one. That is called black hat SEO. And that's how you make money. There's no blogger in the world or no one who makes money online actually doesn't do black hat SEO. In fact, like some of my clients, like big clients like British Airways or Emirates or Hugo Boss or whatever, like they're some of the clients that I work with on my blog and they all use black hat SEO. It's a, a trillion dollar industry. So ignore what Google says. Basically, black hat SEO is where it is at. You want to break those terms and conditions. And if you don't, if you want to play clean, as Google tells you to, you'll be on page 10 and never make a penny and you'll be working in an office for the rest of your life. So there you go. Right. Organic traffic. If you hear about people talking about org organic traffic, sorry. Yep. Do you, I, want, do you want to take yeah. a question, Johnny? Yeah, yeah, sure. Johnny told me to interrupt him at the halfway mark and ask a question, which I think is there's so many good questions in here. And one I think is kind of relevant to what you're talking about, which is an issue that Darren is having where Darren's current setup punishes him for wanting to prioritize lifestyle, which I know you mentioned that a little bit. How would you create the structure to balance building income and lifestyle if you were just starting out now? Yeah, well, it's very easy for me to say now, like I've made my money um that I prioritize that but the first two years that I blogged 2010 2011 I produced one blog post per day for 700 days in a row or something so it's very easy for me to be cocky now like when I've made my money but absolutely you gotta you gotta put the hard yards in when you first start out so no one wants to hear about how you don't have any time like if you're watching Netflix you can wake up at 4 a.m you know what I mean put the hard yards in first of course it goes without saying mm -hmm. okay cool and then how about another one? Are you making all your income from the blog or do you have other revenue models? I mean, now, cause I've got money, I've got properties and, and investments. Of course, I'm very careful with my money after growing up poor. So my investments make me a lot of money too. I'm, just, I'm building villas in Thailand and, and at the moment. So yeah, now it's diversified, but 
originally, of course, the first 10 years and the first three mil I made was completely through my blog and through PBNs, which hopefully we're going to get onto today. Amazing. Okay, last one, and then you're going to keep presenting. So uh, Mo says you have other websites. What are they about? How are you able to manage all of those sites? Can yeah. you elaborate on that point? Absolutely. And this is what the third call at the end of January will be. It'll be completely about PBN. So I, at my peak, I had 200 sites. Now wow. I've got about 40 or 50. Um, and originally, they were all in travel. Uh, like the first 10, 20, 30, 40 that I had were all in travel. And then I just covered every niche, fitness and home improvement and food and da da da. Long story short, when an advertiser came to One Step Forward and said, we'll give you 500 bucks or we'll give you a grand to do an advert, I could be like, give me five grand and I'll put it on 20 sites. And they would just say yes. And that's how I multi like multiplied my income. And that's the whole PBN stuff that we'll talk about briefly today and, and in depth in January where the real money is. And it's easy as well. Amazing. Okay, carry uh, on. We'll come back at you. the end with some more. People are happy. Thank you. All right, let's go back here. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm getting tracks. Organic traffic is... Uh, you know, when you search for something on Google, like Bangkok itinerary, and the first two searches are, are, are sponsored, it says paid or advert or something, and the only people who click on it are your parents, that's not organic traffic. Organic is when you've ranked naturally on page one, and people jet, like come to you without you having to pay for that traffic, that you've managed to battle with your SEO, and now you're on page one, and they let, end up on your website, that's organic traffic. Google Juice. Okay, this is the real beauty about SEO. So domain rating, right? Every website's ranked from zero to 100. That's, and you want to get as high as possible. You do that by getting as much Google juice as possible. We'll talk actually a little bit here, is back, which links very much with backlinks. Google juice is the flow of influence from a more important website than... You, more important websites than yours linking to your website. So like, for example, as I said, I climbed Everest recently, right? And, or I'm off to the South Pole next week. When I finish that, I'm sure loads of Irish media will be like, Johnny Ward went to the South Pole or whatever. And they'll link to One Step Forward. And that's golden for me because they're feeding their Google juice from their reputable websites to me. So my, my website becomes more reputable. Google knows that these reputable websites are linking to my website. Therefore, Google assumes that my website is a valid source of information. So they're allowing their Google juice to flow to me through a backlink. So they'll say like, Johnny Ward reaches South Pole. And then they'll be like, Johnny, da -da 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 -da. Johnny's a blogger at onestepforward.com. And then obviously that onestepforward.com will link to me. That's called a backlink. And that is basically 90% of SEO. You can ignore everything else apart from that. To increase, this is the sentence of all sentences. Actually, I could have just done this and cut the hour to two minutes. To rank on page one on Google, you need a high domain rating. To have a high, high domain rating, you need as many backlinks as possible from powerful websites. End of story. That's it. That's the whole game. Once you do that, once you've got links to your website from other powerful websites, your domain rating will increase and then you can become a blogger. You can write about anything you want and hopefully you'll be on page one because Google assumes that you're a valid source of information because of all these other guys are linking to you. That's backlinks and that's link building. Okay. So once you increase your domain rating to a respectable number of, let's say 30 or above, then you can start worrying about the quality of content that you produce because prior to that your domain rating is so low it's hard to be on page one right so you need to really focus on increasing your domain rating once your domain rating is acceptable then you can focus uh, on creating quality content and when you're doing that you have to consider the keyword difficulty so if you've got a low domain rating as i said you can't choose a Search term like Bangkok itinerary because everyone's fucking chasing that keyword from TripAdvisor to Lonely Planet to big, big, big travel bloggers. They're all trying to fight for Bangkok itinerary. So you as a new blogger or a midterm blogger, you're not going to compete with those guys because that keyword difficulty is hard. You need to go for something with an easier keyword difficulty. And we'll talk about how to find that in a second. Um, search volume, yeah. 
Search volume and, key and keyword difficulty are very closely aligned. So but something like Bangkok itinerary will be a common thing that people around the world search for because so many people visit Bangkok. So the search volume, how many searches in the whole world per month in Google will be high. But if you search for Bangkok itinerary for 36 hours wearing only flip-flops, the search volume for that will be like 10 or zero, right? So that search volume will be low. If you've got a lower domain rating, you're not as likely to rank for juicier keywords. So you have to choose longer uh, search terms that have got less volume because you can't compete for the popular ones. You have to go for lower, be humble. And then as your domain rating increases, then you can, you can go back and hit them up again and write uh, more content on the search terms with higher volume. Anchor text we'll talk about later. Blog structure we'll talk about later. So long tail and short tail uh, keywords are basically what I've said. So Bangkok itinerary is an example of a short tail keyword. That means it's only one or two words. If you search for weather UK, that's a short tail keyword. And that means it's difficult to be on page one because lots of people will be competing for it. A long tail keyword, weather on weather in July in 2022. So it's a, a, a long sentence, basically. Far fewer people are going to search for that specific uh, keyword. And that's called a long tail keyword. So as a new blogger, you've got to target long tail keywords. As a mid to experienced blogger, you can uh, target short tail keywords, which have got higher search volume. Simple as that. So as I said, domain rating is everything. More important than content. You need to get your domain rating up to 30 as a minimum and aim for 50 plus. How do you increase your domain rating? Okay. This is how I did it in my first year. And I think this is gold, by the way. <laughs> first of all, depending on what niche you're a blogger in, whether like you're creating recipes for Thanksgiving or you're a fitness blogger or a travel blogger or a fashion blogger, whatever. What I did um, when I first started blogging, I was a nobody in the blogging world. You remember, you want as many backlinks to your website as possible. You want other sites to link to you, right? So what I did is I jumped on Google and I wrote travel blogger interview. And obviously there was hundreds of interviews with travel bloggers. And then I emailed every one of those websites and said, oh, I see you interview travel bloggers. Do you want to interview me? And 20, 30, 40, 50 of them said yes. And of course, when they interview you, they're going to link back to you. And I did that and got loads of backlinks. And instantly, my domain rating jumped from one, two, three, four, whatever it was, to 15 or 20 over like a one-month period. So do that if you're a blogger. If you're a fashion blogger, just Google fashion blogger interviewer or interview, and then hit up every one of those sites and ask them, do they want to interview you? And some will tell you to fuck off, and that's okay, but some will interview you, right? And eventually, you'll build your domain rating. So that's a great hack. Next one is another one. As a new, if, let's say you're in, you're a travel blogger, for example, and Faroe Islands or Iceland are two really up and coming. Well, Iceland's long become an up and coming destination. And let's say you spend two, three, four days writing an amazing two week itinerary for Iceland. It's 5,000 words. You put all your love into it, edited all your photographs, wrote the best blog post you've ever written, and you can't wait to put it on your blog. On your blog. Don't put it on your blog. Go and hit up some big bloggers with high domain ratings and say, listen, I've created the best blog post in the industry on Iceland. I'll give it to you for free if you link back to me. It's painful, but that gets you uh, so many backlinks. If someone did that to me and it was genuine quality, I would publish that on my blog. Why? Because I've got a high domain rating. That blog post will rank because A, it's good, and B, I've got a high rating. So I'll be on page one. I'm going to get traffic. I'm going to make money for that from that blog post that someone else wrote. It takes me two minutes to publish it. But as payment, I'm going to link to the person who gave it to me. So it's a win-win. Number three is kind of old school, but still works, even though Google hates it. A lot of bloggers have a, pay, a hidden page on your website where I'll add your, I'll add your link and you add mine. It's, that's Black Hat SEO because Google hates it but it's an easy way to get some cheap links. And then finally, which is similar to sponsored content, um, is paid links. People come to me, clients normally, not other bloggers, and ask me, can I pay you 500 bucks, $1,000, whatever it is, to link to me? And 
if the price is right and the content is okay, then of course I do that. And it's a very easy way for me to make money. And I give the, the link to, to whoever the person who's, who's asked me to pay for it. And that's a very similar to sponsored content where people essentially pay you to publish something on your site that links back to their site. Um, and you can you can be you can do that from either side as a publisher as a blogger you can make money doing that they can pay you to link to them but then equally as a new blogger you can pay people to link to you so it's a two way street and that's obviously very common so yeah domain rating is everything once you've got your domain rating then you have to worry of course about how to create a blog post correctly and it's pretty simple. To be honest, very, very simple. If you guys will be able to watch this video again um, when Safety Wing publish it on the YouTube channel, but without boring people, you do your keyword research, which is something we'll talk about uh, in the next call. Once you've done your keyword research and you know the title of your blog post, the simple structure is this. The title, the title again with something called an H2 tag, which means the text is a bit bigger. Um, but by making the text a bit bigger with this H2 tag, you're informing Google that these are the words that the article is about. Then you do an introduction of 50 to 100 words, including those same keywords to, again, reinforce to Google that these are the important terms that your content is going to be about. Then you do every image. You make sure it's got something called meta tags. Let me show you this, actually. I just go to Bangkok itinerary on my blog, for example, you can see it. Okay. So the keyword that I've been trying to target was Bangkok itinerary. You can see again, I've got it. it should be H2. Well done, Johnny. It should be, um, you should try to include the keyword 10, 15 times within the article, even if you have to force it in a little bit, try to make it sound natural, but you want to force it in. So that's the keyword I'm going for, Bangkok itinerary. I have to mention it in the title. Then I write it again, Bangkok itinerary in the first H1 tag or H2 tag. Then intro paragraph, where again, I add other keywords that I may want to rank for, things to do in Bangkok, Bangkok itinerary. You see how I keep wedging it in? Um, then I have an image with the caption, including the keyword Bangkok itinerary, surprise, surprise. And you can see here the alt tag, meta tags also have the keyword Bangkok itinerary. Then I have a table of contents, including Bangkok itinerary, Bangkok itinerary, things to do in Bangkok, other keywords that I want to rank for. And then I simply write the content, 50 words, image with uh, other keywords that you want to rank for, another 50 words, image with more keywords you want to rank for, and, and repeat. All the way down, you do that ideally as, as uh, much as possible, as much content as you can face writing, 2,000 words, whatever. And then at the end, um, you add further information that could rank for other keywords, things to do in Bangkok as a secondary keyword that I'm trying to rank for. But if we were just to search, for example, I always, oh, this is a little like cheesy squeeze uh, to get the extra keywords in. I always write at the bottom of my blog posts, my final thoughts on my Bangkok itinerary, get those keywords in again. But if we just press command and F and search for Bangkok itinerary, we can see how many times I wrote it. You see this 30 times in the article. That's brutal. Um, but this, the format is basically the same for every blog post. You do your keyword research. Once you've done that, you include the keyword that you're trying to rank for. Do it again in there. Do it, make sure it's in the first paragraph. Make sure it's in all your meta tags and repeat, 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 repeat. And at the very end, make sure you squeeze it in one last time. One other thing to remember as a blogger, uh, I think I probably mentioned this in the first call, but things like Wix and Squarespace, you don't want to use those. In fact, you can't use those. You won't rank. You have to basically use WordPress, which is what I'm using on my screen share here. 
you need to use WordPress. If you've got Wix or Squarespace, even if you've been doing it for years, I'm sorry, but you've got to go to WordPress. You've got to migrate it. You cannot rank with Wix or, or Squarespace. You need to own your domain and you need to host it on WordPress. Simple as that. Um, and once you've got it on WordPress, which I'm sure a lot of you do, you can have plugins that help you with SEO. And the number one plugin that you should get is this Yoast SEO Premium. And it will tell you how many times have you included the keyword enough? Have you included it too much? Have you included images? Have you included link? Da, 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 da. And basically, that will just keep your nose clean from an SEO perspective. You follow the structure that I said, of course. And if you follow that stru structure correctly, with the Yoast SEO uh, plugin, you can see when uh, you simply put in the the search term that you're trying to rank for in the plugin itself. And then it will analyze the article that you've, you've written and you're about to publish. And it'll make sure that you've done everything correctly. It is gold. The free version is completely fine. I do pay version, obviously, because I make money blogging. Um, but if you don't want to be paying for any tools, absolutely, the free version is fine. But that is called Yoast. It's golden. All right. So yes, another thing to remember is Google loves long form content. That means it's actually annoying, but this is Google and they're the search gods. So we got to do what they want to do. That means you want to do absolute minimum of a thousand words per blog post, ideally two or 3000. This is just how the current Google algorithm works, which is frustrating. So I'm sure if you ever Google how to boil an egg or how to make bloody mama noodles, and then you click on a blog to find out, is it three minutes or five minutes? I can't fucking remember. And the first paragraph is some dude talking about his life and then the history of the egg and then the best temperature to boil an egg. And then finally in the 12th paragraph, it says boil an egg for X amount of minutes. They've done that because Google rewards you for writing shitloads of content per blog post. Even though as a user, you just want it in the first sentence. You know, but that's how it is. So you have to write long form content. And that's what that means. As you can see there, keyword frequency, table of contents, blah, blah, blah. All right. But how do you choose the keywords? As you saw from that blog post I wrote, um, I chose Bangkok itinerary, right? But my domain rating is quite high. So I can choose a short tail keyword like Bangkok itinerary. And I can hope to be page one. I think I am page one, but I'm not sure for that term. But how do you choose which search term to use? Basic, well, the basic answer is you need to know your domain rating, of course. And then you need to see the competition that's competing to also rank on page one for that search term. There are a million different tools that you can use for this. However, the easiest one and the cheapest one, and one that still works completely fine, there's no need to go and pay a fortune, is one called Key Search. Can you see this? Keysearch.co. I use it every day. So very simply, uh, if you follow me, you'll know, for example, I run um, tours to Mauritania. So I would say, yeah, if I'm going to write a new blog post about my new Mauritania tour, I would type in Mauritania tour, simple, hit enter. Okay, let's see what this brings up. So if you see here, Mauritania tour, the volume is 110 searches. That means globally, 110 people are searching for that per month. Sometimes that can be off by a factor of five. So let's say between zero and 750 people are searching for that per month. And key search ranks the difficulty of how difficult it is to be on page one for that term from zero to 100, similar to your domain rating, which is very convenient, is 23. So that is very easy. I'm sure you can guess the color code. 53 would be difficult, 23 is easy, right? So that means... If I choose to write a blog post with a score of 23, I can be on page one. That's great. Whereas if I chose a blog post called Mauritania Tourism and I chose the keyword as Mauritania Tourism, it's 53. I probably won't rank on page one. 
So even though the search volume is seven times higher, it's a waste of my time to do that because I'm not going to be page one. It's better for me to be humble, take the 110 with a score of 23 and make sure I rank on page one. So that's what I'll do. I didn't realize it was going to be so easy. So I'll probably create that content tomorrow. So on the key search then, you can see the search difficulty. And then if you scroll down, it will show you the 10 uh, current websites that are ranking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you can see your competition, basically, of who you have to beat to get in that first page where you can get some traffic. And I'll just run through how this search works. And then I think we're going to have to call it a day if we're going to do some questions. Okay. So you put your search term in here, hit search, scroll down to see your competition. And you can see this is the first, this will be the first result in Google, the second down to the 10th. And there's a few bits of information that it gives you. PA and DA. DA, if you remember, is the same as domain rating or domain authority. So remember your site, your site will be ranked between zero and 100. Mine is currently ranked at 57 or 58 or something. So I can see that the number one, number one result is ranked only at 26. And I'm at 57. So I can beat that guy. Um, I can see how many domains are linking, how many other websites are linking to him. I can see how many links, how many backlinks are linking to his specific page, only four. And I can see, has he included the keyword Mauritania tour in the URL, which he has. So what that tells me is my website is trusted more by Google than him. I've got more links than him. I've got a higher domain rating than him. So if I follow the correct blog structure that I showed you guys and produce that content, then I should be able to be on page one and maybe even number one on Google. Whereas if I had, uh, if I was to look at Mauritania tourism, which you can see is the difficulty score of 53, Let's hit that and see what the first 10 results are for that. All right. So, oh, that has changed to 49. Okay. Well, you can see straight away, number one is Forbes. Number two is Wikipedia. Number three is TripAdvisor, Lonely Planet, US government. Fuck trying to beat all those guys. I'm not beating those guys, right? Which is why it would be a complete waste of my time to use these keywords, Mauritania tourism, because I'm not going to beat those guys. But I can beat Rocky Road Travel. So I'm coming for you. So that's the very quick introduction to keyword research. You have to really look into the terms that you're searching and stay humble. The volume is important, of course. You want as much volume as possible. But first and foremost, you have to see how difficult it is. And the score that you want to target is roughly equivalent to your domain rating or below. So my domain rating is 57, as I said. So I want to target stuff that's 57 and below. But ideally kind of 40 and below for me. So I'm probably not going to have a crack at 49 because it may or may not be successful, but 23 absolutely can be successful. So that's the, the, in, the introduction to keyword research. But if that's the only keyword research you do, I promise you that is enough to make money blogging. Do you need some Thanks, water? Sam. No, I'm all right. Okay, let's let's do some questions because we got lots just as we expected. So what about updating our same content once it slides down to lower pages? How often is it recommended to do that? Right. I think I said in the first call and in this call, I'm a massively unprofessional blogger, right? I But I produce my content. I, I miss meetings. I, I don't do spell check and I don't care, right? However, it, this is one of those things that my mom used to say, do as I say, not as I do, right? It, you should spend the, like the, a real basic rule for professional bloggers is you should spend 50% of your, of your content creation time creating new content and 50% updating old content. It's a massive thing. Like just constantly pumping out new content is not what you need to do. You need to keep your other stuff updated and improving. And also like as other people learn about that, you can make money blogging and live in Thailand and work from your laptop and make good money suddenly the competition gets better and better and better each year, right? Because other people are working harder and hustling, which is cool. Um, but that means that your old content is pretty shit because you produced it when the standard didn't need to be so good. So you need to keep um, up with the competition. So yes, you absolutely need to spend half your time updating old content. And that's a good question for, uh, that's a good way to segue to Aaron's question, which is about, is it a lot harder to make money blogging these days now oh, that things have become oh, so saturated? Oh. No, I appreciate the question, but I hate this question. You know, like if I'm in a pub 
like I'm off to Argentina or whatever, or Brazil actually, before I go to South Pole, uh, right, next week. And I tell people I'm a, I'm a blogger and they look at you and they're like, isn't blogging dead? And I'm like, all right, mate, yeah. The more, in fact, it's great that people think that. Yes, blogging is dead. I'm just going to sit here and continue to make my money. Mm -hmm. It is not dead. People use Google endlessly, daily. You know what I mean? People are always going to Google, how should I do this? What do I do there? Da, 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 always. And the more people that think it's dead, the better, because it's easier for us to rank and easier for us to make money. There's Facebook groups. Once you, once you get like over a, a million views a, a year or whatever, there's different ad networks that you can join, right? And the most famous one is Mediavine. And there's a Facebook group once you're accepted into those. And every month they have like a, like a bragging thread, which I find really inspirational. And it's just people being like, I made $172,000 this month from my how to make toast blog. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, and it's just endless. I made 37 grand. I made 120 grand. Blah, blah, blah. Endless. Mm -hmm. Endless. And I think Aaron was really getting to, is it harder to do that though now, now that there are more bloggers, like from when you first started in 2009 to now, you said the quality no. has to be higher, no. right? No, no. Gen, Z, Gen Z are lazy as fuck. It's never been easier. Dana, Dana White. Because they're consuming the, so much yeah. content. Dana White, the, the um, UFC president, he nailed it. Go and, go and check that TikTok video. He said, it's never been easier to succeed because there's so many pussies kicking around that if you're even remotely a savage, you will succeed because people are lazy and that's glorious. There you have it. Soundbite for this entire webinar. Let's talk about how much time you actually are spending because you talked about 50% of your time creating, 50% of your time updating. You know, when you were first starting out, how much time were you spending creating your website, creating these blog posts versus how you're doing it now? Yeah, well, ChatGPT and AI forms a structure basically of every blogger's content now. And then you write over the top of what it's already. So like in the last year, that's changed massively. Historically, like a proper blog post would take me a day. But like I said, I don't proofread it or anything. So like more professional bloggers, maybe let's say it would take two or three days. Um, but that's been at least halved, if not reduced by like 75, 80%. Because ChatGPT or, or uh, Koala or whatever tool, AI tool you're using creates the, the entire spine of your content and then you write and put your voice over the top of it. So now, at one of my mates here who lives in Chiang Mai, just around the corner from me, he does like, he, he owns loads of niche websites, which are shit. Like it's, it's not at attached to his like personality and lifestyle the way mine is. So he doesn't care about the quality of the content, but using AI, he produces like a hundred blog posts a day. Wow. So it's completely, but it's completely changed. But to, if you want to create quality content and your personality is attached to your blog and it's part of your identity and you're proud of it, I would still say it takes a day, a, a one day to do one good piece, even with okay. all the help. And you no, want to be, good. you want to be proud of it. And, you know, and people, you hope that people are going to read it and it'll help them, you know, so you don't want to just churn out some AI shite that's regurgitated some other AI shite somewhere else. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll really see how that changes things in the next year, because quantity has been the success metric for a while. It's all about like consistently post every day, post an episode every week, blog post every day. And so it's been like quantity over quality. And we'll see right. how AI shifts what actually yeah. works better. To be, to be honest, though, now with it, I'd say with the last two years of Google updates, I would say that's not necessarily the case anymore. I would say like there's a lot of bloggers making a million dollars plus who've only got one or 200 blog posts and they like total and they don't create new content regularly. They just make sure their one or 200 blog posts are constantly updated. So their full time job literally from nine in the morning is just making sure those the, all those blog posts are constantly updated and they barely need to create new content. Hmm. Wow. OK. Domain authorities, we talked a little bit about your ranking and that number that we should all strive towards. How does social media play into that? Instagram, LinkedIn, does uh, that impact our blogs at all? That's a great question. Do you know, uh, so the Google algorithm, which is the, the big engine that chooses what goes one, two, three, four, five, right? Is constantly updated. I mean, Google, like they're, they're God, they, they control everything in the world. And They've for years spoken about how they're starting to give weight to how many social shares per piece of content created. Instead of it just being about backlinks and domain authority or domain rating, it, they're going to start reflecting how many times it's shared on social. But that still hasn't happened. And it doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. Okay. So not at all, basically. 
Like there's many bloggers making hundreds of thousands per month who don't even have social media channels, you know? You keep saying that you're an unprofessional blogger, unprofessional website creator. Did you hire someone professional to create your website and get you started at the beginning? And if so, how much yeah. should we expect to pay for that? Yeah. So obviously when you first start, I was I was young and broke. I was backpacking in Australia. So I paid a, a guy from the Philippines that I know hundred bucks or something to create like a kind of shitty basic one. So I don't, I couldn't even install a theme on WordPress. Even now I would still struggle to do that, to be honest. Um, so I paid him a hundred bucks and like barely did a logo and, and that's all you need really to get it going. And actually now obviously technology with different apps and stuff is a bit easier. So you could just buy a, a, a kind of semi pro theme for 50 bucks and, and, and you're good to go. But like big bloggers can even now still easily drop 10 grand or even 20 grand on a brand new sexy site, but they've got loads of content that they've got to find and restructure and da, da, da. When you're starting out like a hundred bucks is more than enough. Do you know this concept of like uh, paralysis by analysis? Like, don't think too much. Just fucking do it. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the the. It's like I think I think of a lot with when it comes to like people getting in good shape or running marathons or climbing mountains, and they're like, "What shoe should I buy? Or should I buy the North Face X Seven Six jacket or the pink?" And you're like, "Just climb the mountain." Worry once you're a professional mountain climber, then worry about which one gives you an extra one percent. Right now, just climb the fucking mountain. Pay a hundred bucks, get a theme, get it live, create content. That's it. Mm -hmm. That just put it out there and iterate on the go and see how the market responds to things is, is advice that we hear often in so many different types of business or content creation. But I think what's missing from that is what do you tell yourself if it doesn't land? You know, if you just put something out and you try it and no one visits your blog, what advice do you have for someone that might be struggling and not getting those numbers that they want to get and they're feeling discouraged and they're questioning themselves and they don't they don't have that attitude of like, oh, let's just put out more and see how that goes. So I'm all about tough love. The world's getting soft. Like life's hard. Well, what do you want to do? You want to you want to sit at home and cry about it, how much you hate your job? Or do you want to learn how to do it and break free? Within a year, you could be living the life that you want to live. But it's not, but you have, you have to, like you're, you have to take the leap of faith, right? Or don't. And stick with it and probably have a strong why then on the days where not every yeah, blog post I, is going to go viral. I'm guessing you must have some that tank. Oh, no, yeah. Well, 90% of it, but it's <laughs> you know, like, you've got to be very careful about your social group because all this, all this stuff about like, you know, fake empathy and, and, oh, you tried your best. Like that's cancer. Did you try your best? Did you try your best? Or did you still watch rewatch game of Thrones? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the whole concept of trying your best if you truly know what it means to try your best when you sleep four hours a night and you and you give it every single thing you've done for a year or two and you fail then absolutely like i'm sorry for you and you deserve empathy and sympathy but this modern thing oh you tried your best you gave it a shot like did you like speak to yourself if you really did that sure but let me tell you if you really did do that you won't fail no one's ever done that and failed there's always things you can be trying. You could learn from someone always. else. You could attend always. a webinar like this and take a new piece of advice and try it. So, okay. No, that's the tough love. Good sound bites. You want to do a couple more? I know we're over. <laughs> Sorry, I just see someone asked here because it's something that is quite important because with that, like yep. I mentioned, like I mentioned about Wix and, and Squarespace, which are great if you want, if you're like trying to start a, a coffee shop in your hometown or whatever and you just want to build it yourself that's fine you're not going to rank anyway but if you're trying to be a blogger and you need to rank and someone just asked what about blogspot.com all of it can't touch it you need to buy the domain it's 10 bucks or 15 bucks and go daddy and then you got to pay someone to host it i use blue bluehost and then you've got to use wordpress simple as that buy the domain 15 bucks buy the cheapest go daddy package four bucks a month or whatever and then install wordpress for free one two three Okay, nice. Let's talk a little bit about money because there's two questions. Like someone anonymous just said, but I don't get it. Who pays you? Which I think is an amazing question. And to just make it really clear, but it also touches on Daniel, which is how do you find advertisers? So talk a little bit about who pays you and how you find them. Safety wing. Safety wing payment. <laughs> um, yeah, I talk about it a lot in the first call, actually. So the, the absolute bread and butter for bloggers is... You create, like, I kept using that Bangkok itinerary example, and, and feel free to go and click on that link. In fact, can I share my screen still? Can I still share my screen here, Sam? Or is it, yeah, is we're it seeing, 
Yeah, we're seeing your desktop. And I think we should link your original webinar with us in the chat right, for everybody. It sounds like it's kind of a prerequisite for today. All right, check this out, right? It's it's her um because I've got my ad block on. Hang on, let me put that in. Look at this. It's disgusting to read because it's just wedged full of ads. You see it? Look at this. Mm -hmm. That's who pays me. So yeah, like you have to scroll. I know I'm sorry for everyone, but it pays the bills. You have to scroll, you find the content, add, add, content, add, content, add. So no one pays you. It's not like an advertise. It's not an advertiser in the sense that like when you were reading Men's Health magazine on page six is like a Hugo Boss ad, and and there's a salesman who's had to call Hugo Boss and say, do you want to buy us like one page in Men's Health November? It's not like that. You have a piece of code like um, it's like coder style. I'm not good at that stuff. You sign up for an ad network. They give you a piece of code to put in the back end of your website. And then those ads automatically get filled. It's an automatic thing. So, and then you get paid per thousand, depending on your audience and your location and what the blog post is about. You get paid per thousand views, as I spoke about in the first call. You roughly, very, very roughly, you get paid for every thousand people who read it, you get paid 20 bucks. So, but like, I just wrote that blog post about lessons that I learned about, about turning 40 recently. And I haven't checked how many people have read it. Let's say 50,000 people read it. So I would make what time? I, uh, God, how's my math? 20 times, 200 grand for that. If 50,000 if 50, people read it, I'd make a grand. Okay. Because someone wants to know how much you, how, how much traffic you need to make 500 bucks. So then you're saying like 25K. It just depends. But it, like I wrote, I had this wild story about, um, I ended up getting arrested in Bangladesh because I thought I had pro prostitutes in, in this like place I was sleeping rough in. And Bangladesh is quite a poor country right and um if you google prostitutes in bangladesh or some kind of keyword about prostitutes in bangladesh i'm bloody page one for that so i get loads of bangladesh traffic right and um because bangladesh people aren't clicking on tesla ads generally speaking the the traffic's less valuable so if i get a hundred thousand views from that i don't make any money but if i like i wrote how to build i, I wrote i rank for building a house in thailand or something because I, I blogged about this right and that's mostly an American audience who've got money and they're interested in building properties. So I get shitloads. If 100,000 people was to read that, I would get shitloads because it's an affluent, like 50, 60 year old people from the US who are interested in building houses. So all the ads are affiliated with, with that kind of niche. So mm -hmm. it very much depends. But let, again, let's say like to make 500 bucks, let's say you need uh, 25,000 or maybe less. If you had American traffic, it's the most valuable. Let's say like 10,000 readers a month or something. Something like and, that. And Deborah wants to know, do you get paid just if they visit the site or do they actually have to click on the oh, advertisement? How does that work? You don't have to click, no. Versus affiliate, which is a different revenue stream for you. You only get paid if they actually make a purchase, right? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Cool. Which is a great place to close, which is how you're an ambassador for Safety Wing. We just put the link in there. Anyone on this call can become an ambassador like Johnny and can get paid every time someone clicks on their ambassador link for Safety Wing and purchases one of our products. So we've put a link in there. There's still like 19 unanswered questions, but you're going to come back, right? Is that a yeah, problem? Yeah, if I don't if I don't die in the South Pole, I'll be back uh, end of John. Well, if, if I do die in the South Pole, think of how many views this video will get when Safety Wing publish it. There you go. So what's your raw? It sounds like you are going to be creating some amazing content for us in the South Pole. We're looking forward to following along. We can follow you on Instagram. What's your handle on Instagram? It's one step forward, same as the blog, but it's a number four. Amazing. Forward, yeah. There you go. So we will be following along that trip and we will see you back here in January, hopefully, where we can go deeper on this, answer some more of those questions. Thank you so much, Johnny. Go to sleep. <laughs> thanks yeah will do thanks sam we'll see you again hopefully next month okay bye everybody thanks for being so engaged today we really appreciate it, it makes it way more fun for both of us right johnny it thanks sucks when no one wants to ask us questions so <laughs> okay bye everyone bye bye